just a couple days from Black Friday, we are talking about AI coming to shopping. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. As we head into the holiday season, will you be using ChatGPT as your personal shopper? That's basically the pitch for OpenAI's new shopping research feature, but this is a lot more advanced or in-depth than you might imagine. On the one hand, it does the basic stuff you would imagine, like comparing items and prices to help users find the best fit, but it's really a much more involved, step-by-step, deep research for shopping sort of process. One of the things that OpenAI noticed was that a ton of people use ChatGPT as a way to, in their words, find, understand, and compare products. Sometimes that's about just finding what their options are. Sometimes that's about fitting the options to their needs or preferences. And rather than just showing some shopping-related results when people are searching for those things, shopping research is an entire experience purpose-built for that sort of discovery. Indeed, they make it clear that this is not necessarily just for your everyday simple stuff. They write, For simple shopping questions like checking a price or confirming a feature, a regular chat GPT response is quick and all you need. But when you want depth, comparisons, constraints, trade-offs, shopping research takes a few minutes to give you a more detailed, well-researched answer. So once you get into the experience, which you can automatically select or which can be recommended to you, after you prompt it, it's going to give you a set of follow-up questions. Some of those might be about price. Some of those might be around preference. Some of those might be around the way that you're using it. Some of those will be around distinct features. And after doing a first round of initial thinking, the experience might then ask you to look at a set of different options, giving them a thumbs up or a thumb down or comparing them. So as a way to test this experience, I tried it looking for a robot for my four and a half year old for Christmas. He really wants robots that actually do stuff. And it took me through a whole process experience where it asked a bunch around what types of specific actions it wanted to take. It showed me a number of options and asked whether this was directionally correct or not. And it made a selection that wouldn't necessarily be what, for example, Google search would come up with. The best overall was actually this random little toy robot vacuum because I had mentioned that he really liked when these things actually did things, not just moved around and talked. Now, interestingly, and as makes sense from what I just said, shopping research isn't just a simple system prompt. OpenAI actually used reinforcement learning to train a version of GPT-5 Mini to perform high-quality product research. In their internal benchmarking of product accuracy, the model outperformed the full size of GPT-5 thinking. Initial impressions of this were pretty positive. Olivia Moore from A16Z said, tested ChatGPT's new shopping research feature, and I'm pretty impressed. The UI is adaptive to what you're searching for. It also asks you to rate products while conducting the search to better refine options. In my opinion, the results are quite good with detailed justification for each product. Arthur Lee writes, I used it to buy my wife a new hair color dye since she was concerned with the chemical in the current product she uses. It surfaced a product I would not easily have found. Jonathan Rumor thinks that this is interesting not just from a consumer perspective, but from a business to business perspective. Now, obviously the feature is rolling out just in time for Black Friday, which is expected to be one of the first big tests for AI-assisted shopping. And indeed, Perplexity and Google have also rolled out their own tools for shopping in the lead-up to this big consumer event. Perplexity has relaunched their own version of the feature and made it free for U.S. users. They wrote, AI assistants are at their best when they scale users rather than replace them. They understand intent, remember preferences, and act as extensions of how users would approach a task on their own. Shopping is where an AI assistant can have an outsized impact. Now, the features are very similar. Perplexity's version can also answer specific questions about products, use its memory to hone in on user preference, and present a series of options on product cards to dial in the right choice. But there is also integrated checkout. Thanks to a PayPal partnership, Perplexity users will be able to complete their entire digital shopping trip without leaving the app. Overall, it's clear the AI labs are trying to make a splash with shopping assistance this holiday season, and some industry observers think it'll work. In October, Adobe predicted that we'll see a 520% surge in AI-assisted shopping this year. Adobe Analytics found that AI-based traffic to leading retail sites was up 1,300% last year. That was, of course, off an extremely low base, but their accompanying survey found that 53% of shoppers were considering using AI for their shopping this year. Those users largely expected to use AI for recommendations, deal finding, and gift inspiration. Candidly for me personally, this is one of the least mentally stimulating use cases for AI, but it's also one where it's super obvious why it can be very useful, and I completely anticipate that despite it not getting me out of bed in the morning, it's going to be a feature set that I use very frequently as the capabilities come online. Next up, we move over to a very weird one. NVIDIA seems to be getting defensive as their standing in the industry faces new challenges. Now, this month has, of course, seen a string of questions about NVIDIA's market dominance. First, we had Michael Burry's short thesis, which claimed the useful life of GPUs was overstated. But then much bigger than that was the news that Gemini 3 was trained on Google TPUs, which had analysts taking those chips seriously as an alternative. 
That was followed up by news that Meta might be buying a bunch of TPUs from Google, all of which has NVIDIA feeling the competition in a way that they just haven't before. And despite all of these narratives seeming a little overblown, NVIDIA appears to be taking them very seriously. Earlier in the week, there were reports of a memo circulating on Wall Street that addressed the bear case for NVIDIA, including certain claims of outright fraud. Unlike Enron, the memo read, NVIDIA does not use special purpose entities to hide debt and inflate revenue. Now, at first, it seemed unlikely that the largest company on earth would circulate a memo refuting arguments made on X and Substack, but NVIDIA-focused journalists confirmed the memo had come directly from the chipmaker. Then on Tuesday, NVIDIA stock dropped by 6% intraday on news of that deal with Meta. This was their largest drawdown since April. Around midday, the NVIDIA X account posted, We're delighted by Google's success. They've made great advances in AI and we continue to supply to Google. NVIDIA is a generation ahead of the industry. It's the only platform that runs every AI model and does it everywhere computing is done. NVIDIA offers greater performance, versatility, and fungibility than ASICs, which are designed for specific AI frameworks and functions. This instantly struck everyone as super weird and unnecessarily defensive. When you're the biggest player in the world, you ride above all this stuff. You don't worry about market analysts getting all excited about Google for like five minutes. And this was especially surprising coming from NVIDIA, where CEO Jensen Huang has frankly been a master of PR throughout the boom. In fact, I can't really remember a time where he set a wrong foot in hundreds of podcasts and public appearances. Some think that this probably wasn't an errant social media intern. New York Times tech reporter Mike Isaac wrote, Everyone is dunking on NVIDIA comms for this statement, but you do not tweet a post like this unless someone at the top got very mad at Google's announcement and said, we need to do something. I don't know, man, all very weird. But I will say that on Polymarket, the odds of Alphabet surpassing NVIDIA in market cap this year has surged 20x just this month. Lastly today, HP is the latest company to flag AI-related job losses, announcing significant layoffs alongside disappointing earnings this week. HP said they expect to reduce headcount by between 4,000 and 6,000 by 2028, representing around a 10% reduction of force. The earnings presentation said the plan was to, quote, drive customer satisfaction, product innovation, and productivity through artificial intelligence adoption and enablement. CEO Enrique Lores said, Two years ago, we started to do some pilots on how AI could help us to drive these things. What we have learned is that we need to start from redesigning the process, and once we know how the process could be redone using agentic AI, it can really have a very significant impact. Now, all of that is true, and that's going to be the case for basically every company. The more you go back and redesign from the ground up, the better results you're going to see. But the question here is whether these layoffs are actually about AI or whether that's just a convenient boogeyman. So are these particular AI layoffs truly about tech adoption or just garden variety cost cutting with a new cover story? This one seems like it might be a little bit of both. HP has been on a downward trajectory for many years. They just finished up a previous cost cutting initiative announced in 2022, which aimed to cut around 6,000 workers over three years to save $2.2 billion. Those layoffs clearly weren't to do with AI worker replacement, given that ChatGPT was released a week after that announcement. And while HP is definitely using AI to help with design and customer service, these layoffs feel like they would have happened even if there had been no AI. The announcement came alongside an earnings report that fell short of expectations. Top-line revenue grew by just 3.2%, printer sales are down by 4%, and profit margins have been hit hard by tariffs. HP was already in the middle of a major restructuring with both personnel cuts and moving their manufacturing out of China. CEO Laura's again remarked that HP doesn't have a lot of choice in using AI to cut costs, stating, It's something we have to do to make sure the company stays competitive. Regardless of the truth, there's going to be a lot of chatter, like this from Elections Joe on Twitter, who writes, Either we ban AI or implement UBI. I can't really see any other outcome at this point that doesn't involve insane unemployment rates. That was liked 8,000 times. And ultimately, when it comes to the politics of this, I don't know that it matters that I think laptop mercenary who responded is right when they say, this is all excuses for layoffs that would happen anyway. Something of a preview of what's going to come next year, but for now, that is going to do it for the headlines. Next up, the main episode. 